All righty, happy, whatever you want to call it today. Um, day what? Day, this is day four. Happy day four until Canada's Wonderland opens. I completely just lost my train of thought on that intro. Um, but nonetheless, I thought what better way to um, take out my stress for four days left until opening than playing devil's advocate. So... In today's video, I'm going to talk about why Flight Deck actually might have saved Canada's Wonderland um, in a very interesting way. So for those of you that don't know, Flight Deck at Canada's Wonderland was originally supposed to be a B&M invert. Now the location of that B&M invert, it was supposed to be somewhere around Backlot Stunt Coaster and Behemoth's location. Due to some sort of contract with B&M and Canada's Wonderland being too close to Cedar Point, I don't actually know the fine details of that and if that rumor is actually fully true or if there's more details about Cedar Point and Canada's Wonderland or Canada's Wonderland and B&M and Paramount just being too cheap and not wanting to invest in the planning part of this. They ended up going with an SLC, but nonetheless, they put an L SLC in this location and removed Zuma Flume, Canada's Wonderland's original log flume. It was kind of like a dueling log flume, even though it wasn't dueling fully, but uh, Canada's Wonderland's amazing log flume in its location. A very big mistake, in my opinion, and it would have been awesome to have that sort of international place still existing. But of course, Paramount had to touch it, and they ruined it. Nonetheless, if Flight Deck ended up being the B&M invert, it would have been in this location where Behemoth and Backlot Stunt Coasters sit. Thus meaning when the sale, okay, uh, to Cedar Fair happened, one of two things might have changed. This could have altered history. Imagine, just think about it for a second. This is why I'm making this, this video. I'm playing devil's advocate. Imagine having a B&M Hyper at Canada's Wonderland that isn't in this location. It would have been... It, it, I can't even picture Behemoth existing anywhere else in the park. And then may, maybe Behemoth would have had to have gone over where Leviathan is. And then how would that have changed Leviathan? Where would have Leviathan had to go? So it's just, it's just really interesting to think about it. And on day four of this video, I just wanted to put that into people's heads. Comment down below what you would have preferred. Are you okay with having um, the SLC or do you still, would you, do you still want the B&M invert in the past? Would you go back in his, in time, time travel and change it? Would you put the B&M invert where Behemoth is? Or... <laughs> do you want Behemoth where it is? Like, I like, I can't sit here and fully make up my mind. I would love to have a B&M invert at Canada's Wonderland, but imagine, imagine the, the difference. Like, Kingswood was very important to Paramount back then, too, so they would have never removed Kingswood to make way for a roller coaster. So it's just, it's really interesting. What would have happened? But also, if... um. Paramount did get a B&M invert. There's so many devil's advocates here. As you can tell, I'm super confused. But I just, honestly, it's this video is more like a discussion with you guys um, as friends of the channel. So again, seriously, comment down below because I'm super interested. I'm definitely going to be reading all the comments and responding because this one's super interesting. As you can tell, this is just, I, I have no train of thought here. I'm just, honestly, like I was just out for a walk, an hour and a half walk because I'm really committed to... Uh, uh, losing weight here and I just thought to myself like what if we got a B&M invert what would that have changed would Cedar Fair have looked at Canada's Wonderland so for those of you that don't know we got Behemoth so quickly after the takeover because the CEO looked at Canada's Wonderland and was like oh my god this park needs something big this park needs capacity would that have changed all that like, it's it's so interesting what would have happened to our coaster lineup would it would Paramount have invested in more B&Ms after that, I'm sure it would have been a big draw. So would it have changed Paramount's um, look at Canada's Wonderland? Would we have got different coasters? So it's so interesting. Like, And then like, what would have happened with our expansion ability? Would we have had the land for Leviathan and Yukon Striker? I mean, Yukon Striker fits perfectly because Skyrider, but yeah, just like, where do you think Behemoth would lo be located? 
if Cedar Fair took over and there was an invert in that place of the lift hill, where do you think they would have located it? Like, probably where Leviathan is, in my opinion. So then where would Leviathan go? Like, can you... I'm, like, literally, like... I'm just thinking about it. Like, that little piece of Paramount history may have actually been good for the park. It, it it lets Cedar Fair do what Cedar Fair is actually really good at and fitting coasters in really tiny plots of land. And for those of you that don't know, just picture Leviathan, okay? The station area is, re- in reality, all the plot of land they really needed. Everything else about Leviathan is built over things. Okay, so Cedar Fair is a really good at picking a plot of land and being like, yeah, we want a coaster there, and then just build it over everything else. Look at Yukon. Okay, they took Skyrider, almost like a plug and play. It's not fully a plug and play, but almost like a plug and play. Built Yukon's lift hill station and brake run in its place, and then just, like we're going to send Yukon's drop through Vortex. It's going to come out the other end of the lake, just do an Immelman, and then the rest of the ride's going to be built over Timberwolf Falls alongside a path. Behemoth, we're going to build the station in Action Zone, but the rest of the ride's going to go over um, Backlot Stunt Coaster and then just follow a very thin line right next to the lake, and then it's going to go over the lake and then back into the brake run. Like, it's almost amazing what Cedar Fair does with their B&Ms, which is crazy because a lot of people are like, well, this park's out of expansion land, that park's out of expansion land. In reality, if you're a Cedar Fair park, I mean, other parks do the same, you're not out of expansion land. They just need almost like flat ride plots of land nowadays to build these B&Ms over if you're a park that can afford B&Ms. So it's just, I just really wanted to put this in your mind, okay? This is this is my seven day countdown and I wanted to have a discussion with you guys about something that was really tr- like, just like causing me like stress on my walk today as I started to get more, I just fell down the well. I feel like Alice in Wonderland. I fell down a well, I lost my train of thought and I wanted to have a discussion with you guys about this topic. As you can tell, I'm almost like excited. It's just crazy to think like how that could have altered everything. But yeah, definitely comment down below. If you have any other just even interesting topics of discussion, like I'm curious, just like use my comment section as like just a crap post or just like what are you thinking about or what about wonderland really intrigues you or just like even like responding to the question i asked earlier because now i'm like just like what else is there to like think about at wonderland because this is crazy shouldn't have gone down this i shouldn't have i shouldn't have made this a video i shouldn't have gone down this whole trip but nonetheless as always, thank you so much for even taking time out of your day at 9 in the morning, 12 p.m., whenever you watch this video, taking time out of your day to click on my video, watch it. If you leave a like, you leave a like. If you don't, that's okay, too. But just even, you know, 2,000 people watching my videos lately a day um, is crazy. The channel's been blowing up out of nowhere. I get like 6,000 views a day now because some of my vlogs from last year are getting promoted by YouTube. And it's just crazy. There's so many new subscribers here. And it's just like, I feel so blessed. Like, the fact that I have a forum to come and just rant about what I want to rant about or talk about the business aspect of this park. And just, it's so awesome. Like, thank you so much for even, like, putting trust in this channel and myself and my team. It means a lot. It really does. I know I always say it. I don't say it enough. But, like, I just feel like, I I feel like there's more I should do to show, like, how thankful I really am. And I just can't even like think about it. Like <laughs> I, I'm planning this really big giveaway. Like I don't want to give too much away, but like even at the end of the season, this season, I'm thinking about possibly giving away all season fast lane for like one person next year in 2022. Um, and we're going to be doing some pretty cool merch giveaways through the season for some videos and stuff like that. So like stay tuned. Um, and if you have any other ideas, um, think like honestly, just thank you. I think I just ranted for like five minutes about a thank you. What's wrong with me today? I'm just so excited about opening and it's day four, four days left. And I'm just like clearly losing my mind as you can. If you can't tell in this video, I'm just like, so there's no script. There's no plan. It's just a rant. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, hopefully you have an amazing weekend. Is it the weekend? 
It's not the weekend. I thought Canada Today was, it was like a weekend. Anyways, have a good one. Thank you so much for watching the video. Bye. <laughs>